Uh, guten Tag and welcome. Uh, we're so glad you joined us today for our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where we it's our intention to send out a topic out there into the ether every week that can be of a practical benefit for one and all. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeimer, behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, fortunate enough to be here. And on my left would be... My name is Sarah. I'm a student here at Shadowing Gym. And on my right... I'm Kayla. I'm a PA student from St. Francis University. And quite often, sometimes when I'm dealing with uh, patients, Sarah, some folks will often say to me, well, this is the way I was raised. This is the way I was taught. Uh, you you can't change your stripes. Uh, I'm stuck in a rut. Uh, this is the way it always is. Um, have you ever heard people say that? All the time. All the time? All the time. <laughs> that sounds like an excuse, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. You bet. <laughs> However, there's an exciting uh, concept out there called uh, neuroplasticity. Could you talk a little bit about that, Kayla? Yes. Um, neuroplasticity is basically the physical ability of the brain to grow and change. Um, mostly this applies to children, like infants and babies and stuff like that, um, because their brains are growing and changing so quickly. Um, but fortunately, we have that ability to, or we maintain that ability to uh, grow and change our brains for the rest of our lives. Right, and from my conception, from my viewpoint, uh, that means that you can, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And as this dog is getting older each day, that that's a pretty exciting concept to me. Um, so today what we're going to do is perhaps show you some of the neuroscience behind this and some of the practical applications that you can use yourself or uh, entertain and mystify your friends, uh, be the life of the party, uh, to perhaps show how these things can be, can be accomplished. And before we before we go on into uh, into the program, we're going to in what we call this particular program today is called reshaping the mind. Is reshaping the mind. Quite often, people go to the gymnasium or the gym, or they hire personal trainers to to re-sculpt their body. Do they not? Mm -hmm. You bet. Uh, they lift weights to grow stronger. Do they not? Yeah. And they and they do repetitive type of activities in order to get themselves in a in a position where they would like to have others view them and have a more positive view of themselves. Would that be right, Kayla? Yeah. Okay. So tell me why we can't do that with our minds. Tell me, tell me why we cannot do that with our thoughts, feelings, and emotions. We can. It just takes a lot of concentration. It takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Yeah. Are you lazy? Yes. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been prone to procrastination, Kayla? Oh, yeah. You bet. You bet. So, however, uh, today we'd like to show you a little bit what a little bit of investment in yourself could, could pay off as. So, actually what neuroplasticity is, it's reshaping brain pathways. It's having the ability to consciously change the way the brain processes. And it's certainly a new and uncharted area of, of science. Um, from when we were young, Sarah, we've all written an owner's manual between our ears. Have we not? Yeah. And uh, Kayla, perhaps you're a little better informed on technology than I am. Uh, changing, changing brain pathways and whether brain processes isn't like pulling out a hard drive and replacing it. No. So, however, we, we begin by making making small small changes, small doable changes. Uh, Sarah, have you ever did anybody there ever smoke cigarettes? Yeah. And that becomes more of a habit, doesn't it? Yes. What do people do, Kayla, when they get up in the morning? What's the first thing they do? They reach for the cigarettes. And after they when they have a cup of coffee, what do they do? Uh. After they have a <laughs> cup of coffee, generally, what do they do? Have their breakfast? They have. They just they generally have a cigarette. Okay. And what happens when we, I see you have okay. around many people who smoke. <laughs> so uh, the idea is that when when they pick up a telephone, what do they do? They grab the cigarette. You bet. There when they get go. it, when they get into a car, what do they do? Grab a cigarette. You bet. After dinner, what do they do? Cigarette. And 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 those, sometimes those things appear in their hand exactly exactly by magic. Uh, so. Is there a magic brain workout, as we discussed earlier with, with body sculpting? Uh, we know that using your muscles makes your muscles stronger. Is that the same concept that's used in your brain? Does using your brain make you smarter? And, of course, we always ask people to keep involved and um, doing uh, crossword puzzles. That, that, that certainly keeps you a little sharp. But, however, really and truly, all, all doing a whole lot of crossword puzzles, uh, Sarah, we'll make you better at crosswords. 
Okay, it'll help you. It'll help you do crossword puzzles. So the idea is, uh, what we're trying to do is the, there's a difference between knowledge and intelligence. There's a difference between. Uh, do you ever watch Jeopardy? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever watch Jeopardy? Yep. Yeah. Those people can repeat a whole lot of facts back. Can they not? Yep. And, and in fact, involves a, a much memorization. So, however, true intelligence is the ability to learn. True intelligence is the ability to learn. So what we're doing, Sarah, we're talking about reforming and reshaping, creating new neural pathways. Our nervous system is wired with millions of neurons that run its pathways that connect like a really complex road. So when we learn new behaviors, we make new paths. Uh, so I would think that, have you ever been lost? Have you ever driven anywhere and got lost? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So perhaps maybe the next time, Kayla, you might write down the instructions. You might write yeah. down the directions. Yeah. Okay. So after the third or fourth time of you traveling that, that, that new route, are you a little bit more familiar with it? Yes. Okay. So, and again today, that's what, that's what we're going to be learning about. Uh, so the more we use a certain pathway, the more efficient that neural pathway gets. Our thought or action becomes faster and requires left effort, less effort. So in order to, uh, in order to illustrate that today, what I'm going to ask uh, Sarah and Kayla to do is we've already uh, came up with a sentence uh, that we're going to use today, and that sentence is? Mindfulness is fishing without bait. Mindfulness is fishing without bait. So, and uh, you girls right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Right-handed. So right-handed is your dominant hand, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is take the take this uh, the, the marker in your left hands and in cursive write that write the sentence please. Mindfulness is fishing without bait. And this might be something that you might want to incorporate in your in your daily life at home. This particular type of uh, activity shows you the focus and concentration that is necessary in order to in order to change these neural pathways. Um, it's very difficult to think our way into behavioral change. It's be able to think our way into in the 12-step world, we'd call it acting right. So what we do is we take the action and effort into our lives and, and transfer that into changes in thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors. And my guess is that uh, for both of you, that when you actually even had to to pick to hold the pen to hold the marker in your in your left hand, you had to th even think how to do that. Yes. Did you have to do that, Sarah? Think yeah. of how to how to actually hold the pen? I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so so when you're when you're when you're making the letters, let's say when you had to make the M, Kayla. The, the first letter in the sentence. Did you have to actually think, how do I make my hand go? Yeah, it's like you had to like slide it across more and be more like conscious of mm -hmm. how you move it. Well, sure. So you're so you're being more conscious of how you move that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So could you could you show uh, could you show those to your audience? We're not we're not giving grades on penmanship here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> not giving grades on penmanship. So my guess is, Sarah, I have a hunch that if you wrote that sentence in your right hand, you wouldn't have taken you much time at all. I wouldn't even thought of it. <laughs> do you ever do you ever really when you're writing in cursive? Do you ever really think on how to how your right hand is making an M? No. No, because those are repeated patterns of behavior. Those are, those are neural pathways that you have long developed and are, and are familiar with and are comfortable with. Is that correct? Okay, so uh, my, and again, I have another hunch. I'm full of them today. Actually, I have a crystal ball that works today. So, Sarah, if you would write that sentence seven or eight times a day, would you possibly be a little bit more familiar with that? Probably, yeah. At the end of, a, at the, end of the month? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. So perhaps you could explain to uh, our listeners and our viewers uh, what type of program you're involved in at your education. You mean my physician assistant program? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm working on my master's degree. It's a five-year program, and um, is, as part of my last year, I have to go around to a bunch of different specialties and kind of get a taste of every single aspect of medicine. So you're telling us that you continuously get put in new environments. Yes, definitely. So tell me about your willingness and how you adapt to each different rotation. Um, 
it definitely helps to know something about the rotation going in, so you can prepare yourself for it. But um, I've definitely found that as the rotations go on, you do get more comfortable with putting yourself in new situations and even being confident that, that like, okay, even if I mess up, then my preceptor is going to be okay with fixing it and making sure that I learn for next time. Well, sure. Well, sure. And, uh, Sarah, you took the initiative. Uh, you took the action and effort, not into wishing and hoping that you may have a uh, career as a uh, clinical mental health therapist. You took some action and effort and actually put yourself into the into the swimming pool. Yes. So, uh, tell me, tell me, were you, were you comfortable here your first day? Were you comfortable your first few times? Um, yeah, I was comfortable just because this place is so, like, inviting and warming, but it is a little, I don't want to say awkward, but I don't know anyone and I didn't really know anything, but after the first day I got pretty used to it. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's great. Wonderful. So what we're doing is we're called, we're called Forging New Roads. Uh, to make pathways, it requires more than repetition used to make muscle. It also requires attention, attention. And when we deal, when we, we deal with here at Seclair, uh, ours is a mindfulness-based uh, practice. And so, have you ever seen what, what when, when you think of mindfulness, what comes to your mind, Sarah? Um, using your mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically. Well, sure. <laughs> well, quite often, Kayla, what people see, they imagine is uh, Buddhist monks in uh, crimson and saffron robes, sitting on their on their haunches with a whole bunch of candles going around with bald heads and closed eyes, going mm, all day. <laughs> However, that's that's one way to do it, uh, and mindfulness is not necessarily about being able to take mind trips around the world. Uh, what it is truly about is about being present and aware and being able to describe your current circumstances. Being here. Yes. Being here. And you know that quite often I will ask people what time it is. Right now. It's right now. Tell me about that. Did you ever did you ever think of that, Sarah? Actually every day now I think of <laughs> Did you ever think about that? When somebody would ask you before what time it was, what what would what would your natural inclination be? Yeah, I usually look at the time. <laughs> look at the time, right. Right. So, uh, tell me, tell me if mindfulness has had any effect on your life at all. It doesn't have to have, uh, Kayla. Yeah, I think it probably has. Um, especially with being in school, probably I would have answered that question. It is this much time before our next test because our <laughs> yeah, lives were ruled by all of our exams. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say that it's definitely, especially putting myself in a new situation. It's definitely been more helpful for me to be aware of Absol what's going on Absolutely. Now. The focus and concentration. It's very difficult for you to learn about uh, formularies and uh, psychopharmacology when you're thinking about four or five different, other different things at the same yes. time, is it not? So uh, it seems that the brain works by building efficiency of one neural pathway at a time. Only the one you give attention to. Uh, that basically means there's no crossover. For example, doing crossword puzzles won't make you less likely to remember where you put your glasses, but it will make you remember at crosswords. Have you ever walked into a room, Sarah, and forget why you went in there? Yes, all mm -hmm. the time. Did you ever misplace your keys or your cell phone, Kayla? I think just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Have, has anyone ever been in the shower and, and forgotten whether they've washed their hair or not? Uh, so th these are, or anybody, have you ever read a, a book? Have you ever read a page and a half of a, of a textbook or even a pleasure book, Kayla? And after that page and a half, your eyes have been, may have gone over every word, and after that, you really couldn't tell anybody what was on. Yes. Sure. Has anybody ever? Have you ever been in a conversation with someone, uh, Sarah, and halfway through the conversation, you realized that you didn't pick up on a whole lot of? I hope this isn't important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. And it's not. It's not. It's not that we're suffering from dementia or the early onset of Alzheimer's. It's the fact that we weren't there when you put your keys down. You weren't there when you put that cell phone down. You weren't there when that person was talking to you. And that's and that's and that's truly, truly the idea about mindfulness. So here is and what are some common attitudes toward meditation? That I'm going to do this and I must get it right. I'm going to concentrate as hard as I can. I should focus a hundred percent. I'm going to try extremely hard. Well, and when when somebody tells me that, I tell them that 
they're, they're, it's hopeless. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the one, Kayla, where there was a person who wanted to, who wanted to learn how to do martial arts. They found a master, they found a, a dojo, Sarah, and they went in there and they told this, uh, the master, they said, if I work very hard at this, if I really, really put my mind and effort into this, how long will it take me to obtain your level? He said, the master said, thought, he said, mm, 10 years. And then the, then the person said, what if I concentrate day and night? I eat and sleep this. I never leave the dojo. I never have any concentration or anything other than this. How long would it take me to get to your level? And the master thought, he said, hmm, 20 years. So the idea is is that how, how hard are we trying? Are we trying too hard? Or are, we letting, or are we letting our life flow? I love that. Did you ever feel like your eyes were bulging out like that when you were trying to? Get some of your work done. Yes. <laughs> so, and a lot about meditation is it's about getting where you already are. It's about getting where you are. Uh, and uh, and John Cabot's in this was a, one of the titles of his book. Uh, no matter where you go, there you are. And that that comes from Confucius. Do you ever think of that? No matter where you go, there you are. Never thought of that. Actually. Because sometimes when I'll I'll ask some people, Kayla, I'll say, uh, you know. Everyone has to be somewhere, mm -hmm. and why not right here and right? Why not right here and right now? So some benefits of meditation are that your mind does get stronger and faster. It increases the connections between your brain cells, and it's jurification linked to processing information quickly. Um, have you learned anything about this in your schooling, in your in your training? You mean the neuroplasticity oh. and then the benefits of meditation? Oh. Not directly as related to the benefits of meditation, but yeah, just the neuroplasticity and how our brains develop and um, learning certain habits and things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it also aids in emotional stability. Emotional stability. So it also has to do with pain, pain being more of an issue. So a lot of pain that we are dealing with are only really thoughts, Sarah. They're, they're sensations. They're sensations. So, and also it has to do with dealing stress. Uh, I always love this one. I said, there are only two times I feel stress, day and night. And I know that in your particular um, rotations and in your schooling, I imagine that you and stress are quite, uh, quite comfortable with each other. So tell me, tell me about what stress does to you, uh, Kayla. Tell me about how you feel stress. Um, normally, whenever I'm stressed, um, it's usually about an exam or something like that, and I will kind of do the opposite of what I should do, and I'll procrastinate, and then that gets me more stressed. It's kind of a big, big, ugly cycle. And tell me how stress uh, impacts you in your life, Sarah. Um, basically, like what she said, I kind of just push everything aside and I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and we're going to continue this uh, at a later date. I would like to uh, plug one book that I found uh, incredibly helpful in history. It's called The Practical Neuroscience of Buddha's Brain, Happiness, Love, and Wisdom by uh, Rick Hansen and Richard uh, uh, Medias. I would also like everyone to perhaps save a date for that would be, I believe it's on May the uh, 2nd, oh. May the 2nd at uh, Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville, Pennsylvania, where we will be having an integrative uh, holistic health care healthcare conference, uh, and also uh, where we'll be presenting uh, many people, uh, many like-minded individuals with a holistic view of health and wellness. Also, uh, coming up uh, shortly, coming up soon, we're going to be having a silent retreat among friends here at, at Seclair. And it's called Stop the Noise, and it's called Hearing the Healing Sounds Within Your Soul. And that's going to be on Saturday, uh, March 14th, uh, from 9.30 a.m. till 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, the registration information, everything will be at uh, on the Seclair website. And I'm going to ask uh, my friend Kayla, to May 1st. Oh, May 1st, excuse me, May 1st. That was only one day off. Uh, what time is it? Well, it's right now. Uh, <laughs> so I'll ask uh, Miss Kayla to take us out. Okay, to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google+, Plus, or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life, and keep an eye on any of these for our next live recording Mondays around noon to ask your own questions. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Video. 
and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And please uh, stay tuned each Monday as we're going to be highlighting uh, various presenters and speakers and presenters at uh, our conference, uh, Sarah, and on May the 1st at uh, Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, many interesting people and perhaps some uh, alternative uh, ways of uh, health and wellness. So until then, our always, our, as our, always our free prescription is fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Perhaps unplug your TV, take up fishing, and for a truly mindful experience, you, what do we do? We fish, fish with that. We, we yeah. fish with that. <laughs> we not? So I'll, I'll, I imagine, I think I see I have a lot more work to do with you too. So uh, take care, and until the next time, uh, your assignment is to be good to yourself. <laughs>